All right, guys, so I uploaded this video last week, and when I originally wanted to make, or what I originally wanted to make was just a, an overgrown lawn mowing video that consisted of me utilizing battery-powered equipment. And I felt that that was the best way to showcase how effective this equipment could be. Um, so what I did um, was I allowed my grass, my backyard, to grow for three months. Now, for some reason, I would have expected it to be a little bit overgrown, like a lot taller. Um, maybe it's just the grass or the soil um, or just the way my house is oriented, but it wasn't as tall as I thought it would be. I've mowed much, much more overgrown properties than this and um, this was it was a good good way to showcase like i said this equipment but um i honestly think i don't think i would have done any any more like anything oh more overgrown i think this was like a good good comparison it was a good um test test run for this equipment so it worked out really well um so kind of a backstory uh, to, to basically utilizing this equipment. Um, last year, I was invited to attend a steel event. I wasn't able to, um, but I was still on their quote unquote ambassador program. I don't, I wouldn't even really call it that. Um, but I had messaged them and or emailed them and I asked if I could borrow uh, our demo battery powered equipment now when i received it um from the distributor it wasn't mailed to me i met a um representative in my local area um, and he had equipment that went around and i'm assuming that you don't even have to be on the ambassador program to actually um request a demo i think you can just email them i don't quote me on that i think you just email them and, and request it um but he brought it to me uh, unfortunately, it didn't have a bag, so I wasn't able to bag anything, and I really didn't want to because that would have taken a, a little bit longer. But just be aware that if you were going to bag this type of grass, it probably would have taken you uh, a significantly longer amount of time. Um, and the equipment that I got, it was more of a homeowner-based equipment. Um, it wasn't really like something that I would use if I had a commercial business or wanted to use it in a commercial business. So this was the, right now what I'm using is the steel FSA 90R. It's a battery powered trimmer. Um, I got a battery for each. Um, and what I wanted to do, and I'll go over the later, maybe in another video, um, the actual amount of work that you could do with one fully charged battery. So I, I charge these batteries up to 50%. And I had to replace them at least two to three times. I think in the video, I only showed it twice. So right now what I'm doing is, I'm, and this is the way I mow. Everybody mows differently. This is the way I mow. So I'm going around the whole perimeter of my yard with this trimmer. And as you can see, there's a huge weed. That thing just grew. I thought it was a tree. Um, and I tried actually knocking it down, but I guess there wasn't enough power um, and it would have knocked down and it was pretty thick. So I ended up having to uh, get um, pruners and cut it down and then dig the root out. Uh, so I go throughout the whole perimeter just because it's easier for me. Because if I don't do that, then I'm having to come back. Um, and that's just the way I mow. So I go around the perimeter with the, uh, with the trimmer. And from what I've experienced, and people are like, why is he going up and down? Well... It's just the way that the length of the grass is, it's kind of like you're knocking it down and uh, you're also cutting it at the same time. So I'm, I'm going throughout the whole, the, uh, the whole perimeter. And of course, I'm pretty sure this, at this moment, I was like thinking in my head, I know I'm gonna have viewers that are like, why isn't he wearing pants? Well, again, I wanted to do this video as if I'm a homeowner, I'm mowing my grass as an everyday homeowner, and I'm not a commercial business. Granted, I still have hearing protection, and if you can't notice, I have eye protection. Why? Because ever since I had a biz or ever since I had a business, I've noticed that I enjoy 
protecting my ears and my eyes because that stuff goes everywhere. I also am not wearing a long sleeve, which I, I don't like wearing shorts and I don't like wearing short sleeve, but I wanted to do this specifically for this video. Um, I much rather enjoy wearing boots, longer boots that protect my ankles, uh, just in case I, you know, if there's snakes in the grass or anything else, or I get hit with the trimmer line. Um, and it doesn't allow grass to get all over me. It's easily, uh, I can blow it off the blower, or I could just pat it down. And I also enjoy wearing a uh, long sleeve because that protects me from the sun and the weather, and I basically don't have to deal with grass all over my arms. Uh, so yeah, and then obviously the hat, um, that was a, a new hat for uh, my new business, uh, Road Runner Long Care. Um, so prototype right now, not really, um, just try, trying things out. But have you noticed this trimmer, this battery proud trimmer is actually um, cutting through this grass fairly easy. Now it had just r rained, I would say two days ago. So there's some moisture in, in the grass, but not entirely too much um and it looked like it was going to rain that day so i was trying to trying to hurry up but obviously with with recording and then moving the camera around it just took a little bit um the one thing i did not like about this trimmer is if you notice in the front where the trimmer head is it actually um i'm, I'm assuming that's where the motor is so without the battery in it's very very front heavy um and when, once you put the battery in it, it kind of balances it out, but it's, you're, it's a lot of strain on that trimmer. All right, so this is the, uh, this is the mower. Um, it's the Steel RMA 510. It's a walk-behind battery-powered mower. Now, this is not uh, a self-propelled. You actually have to push this. Um, and by starting, you press that, that orange button that's by my right right hand. You press that orange button first, and then you pull, pull back on the lever, and that'll start it. Um, it's fairly quiet. I'm used to the loud um, loud sound of a right mower or uh, the Honda mower, but this is, this is fairly quiet. Now, I still use um, hearing protection just because... And honestly, one, I enjoy the, the over-the-ear hearing protection because it protects grass from going in your ear. So I'll never use one that go in your ear. It's always going to be one that go over my ear because anything that's flying about, it's just another source of protection. Now, <clears throat> this is on the highest setting. What I like about this mower is that lever back there, if you notice, um, by the back right wheel, um, that lever is a single lever. So you don't have to go to each tire or each wheel and adjust it. It does the whole deck. Um, and I have it on the highest setting. And what I'll do later on in the video is I'll put it, I wouldn't say to the middle setting, so like the third notch from the bottom or the lowest setting, and I'll go over it once more. Um, but it, it went through. There was some areas in this grass where I kind of had to go over or back up and go over it again. Um, but it was it was fairly easy. and and. Again, later on in the video, I'll point it out where I guess when I hit a big, big point in the grass where it just, it sounded like it took a lot of, or drew a lot of power from the battery and it was running and sounded different. Um, and I stopped and I was like, that doesn't sound good. Um, but I think it was just the fact that the battery was getting low and it was trying to not, it was trying not to use as much power. Um, but it's easily pushable, um, no issues, and uh, I actually enjoyed it. Now, I don't have the mulch kit installed, um, so if you notice, there's clumps of grass, and I'm honestly not sure if this even cut really, uh, really fine to where it created some type of mulch, but it cut good. I, I, I really enjoyed use, using it, and uh, I honestly want to purchase one for my home. And I, I think I would go with the commercial setting because I would like to try it on a commercial property uh, for the smaller ones that I don't have to use like a huge, huge mower. Um, but if you notice in the, in the front uh, where the battery goes, so it's right there where that orange clear um, lid is. So there's two areas for batteries. There's one area for a battery that is basically utilized um, for the power. And then there's an additional storing 
area for a battery that if you run out of battery and it dies, well, then you can just swap them and then continue. You don't have to run back to your truck or run back to your van or whatever type of vehicle that you use for your lawn care business and get out the fuel tank and fill it back up. It's simply take the battery out, swap it, and then continue on. Now, with the amount of uh, power drawn from this, I would say that I could probably mow this yard twice. Um, and like I mentioned before, I would love to do a, um, a video with a fully charged battery. I'm going to place it in its charger for the whole day or however long it's required uh, per the requirements of steel. Charge it fully and then mow my yard until it dies um, and see how long it actually takes for it to to die. Um, I know there's there's actual specifications that say this battery can last this long, but um, those are, in my my opinion and in my experience, those are uh, estimates, and they're not really um, something that can actually uh, work in everyday life because you have different factors. You have, you know, the the length of grass and um, just so many so many different factors. So. Uh, Obviously, that video is not going to be the one video that says this is how long this battery lasts and that's it. But, you know, that's it, it'll help kind of guide you in the right direction of whether or not this is going to be a good purchase for you or not. Um, all right. So the way I mow my grass is obviously I go the long, long route um, back and forth. Um, and then I try to keep a perimeter so it's easier for me to turn because um, that chain link fence can kind of get in the way. But, yeah, I'm just basically going back and forth here, um, creating a perimeter that's uh, easier for me to maneuver back and forth so I can, um, so I can go, go through. Um, I think this is the area that where it starts getting a little bit thicker. Um, and I noticed uh, towards me getting to that certain point, I noticed the, the battery or the mower starting to like bog down. So I was like, okay, this is the point of where I need to kind of be aware of what's going on. And if you notice, it cuts fairly well. I mean, without the mulch kit, without the bag, it, it cut fairly well. It did leave some clumps here and there, and that's, and you know, I wasn't at the length that I, I wanted it to be at. And if you notice the perimeter, uh, where I trimmed, it's a little bit lower, um, a little bit more white, I would say, versus green, because that's where um, I trimmed a little bit lower, and the grass hadn't seen much lighter, I guess, received much water, so it's there. So this is where I stopped, because I noticed it was bogging down, and I was like, okay, I'm I was pretty tired, it was very humid and very hot, and uh, then when I went to go start it back up, it died. So I'm just showing that, hey, it's dead. This is how you check the battery into life, and it's blinking. So that means it's, it's dead, and it needs to be charged. So I put the other battery in. Um, now, unfortunately, this, this next battery that I put in, I didn't charge it uh, to its full capacity. So halfway through, it died again, and I was like, great. So I had to basically, at this point, I was already charging the one that I originally took out. I had to swap them back in and then finish. Um, but good, good news is that when you put it on the charger, it charges very fast. Um, so that was good. And, and that's what I appreciated because if you have, say you have five batteries and you're using, utilizing this equipment for a commercial business, um, and you have a way of charging your batteries on your vehicle, they can charge fairly fast. So you're not having to like, okay, if I, I have five batteries and once I'm dead, I'm done for the day and I can't mow anymore. No, that's not the case. You can charge them pretty fast. So if you notice, right here is actually where it starts to bog down because the grass is a lot thicker here. But it cuts through just fine. Um, but I did notice that it was like the sound was getting different. The feel of it was getting different. You notice those things. Um, if you mow grass long enough and you get familiar with the equipment that you use, you can start seeing and feeling different and hearing different things that, that kind of pique your attention of, hey, this is not good, or I don't want to continue this because my equipment could get damaged or um, not work anymore or not work properly. So, yeah, this is just grass that was very, very rough. And I was like, okay, that's not good. Um, so kind of went back over a little bit. 
and uh, just continue going. So here's where I stopped, and I was like, hmm, I wonder if this is about to die. And I was hoping it wasn't because I needed to, but so I just backed out and uh, made sure everything worked, made sure it was on, not, wasn't on eco mode because it did make that, that sudden uh, difference of sound. Um, there is an eco mode on there that you can flip a switch and that allows the mower to run. Maybe if your grass isn't as tall and you're just maintaining it on a weekly basis, you could use that mode and that allows you to, to prolong the battery life. So it wasn't on, there's was nothing else. And it was in there correctly, didn't hop out or disconnect, and I continued on. And uh, it was it was kind of rough because at, at that point, I think that the um, the length of the grass was allowing the battery to work harder, so it was just dying at a more uh, rapid pace. So that wasn't really anything that was responsible for the battery. It was just that this grass, for some reason, because it's in the shade and it's next to the, my home and it gets a lot more water from uh, rain, you know, falling on the edge of the house. Um, it just, it's um, a lot more thick there. So I kind of had to lift the deck a little bit and cut it. And if you notice all the clumps that are kind of left, so some of that stuff is from the trimmer, some of that stuff is from the mower, um, a lot of grass, but it's it's very, um, it was very tall, so it left a lot of excess grass. Now, granted, if you're not that type of person that likes excess grass like that and you want to bag it, I'm sure this mower has a great bagging system. Unfortunately, I didn't have one, um, which is okay. Uh, I wasn't really wanting to bag this grass, like I mentioned, because it would have taken me forever. Um, but I'm sure that if it's maintained and on, on a consistent basis, that that bagger would have worked just fine. So when I, when I mow, I kind of line up. So with, I guess with how tall it was and it wasn't really like there was some stray grass areas. Um, I basically looked at the line that I created and cut the deck in half and then went back. So usually I'm like wheel on line and then go. And that, that allows me to cut a yard in a faster manner. Um, but with the length of the grass and how I wanted it to be cut evenly um, I kind of cut my lines or my pathways in half and then I just cut from there so with my this is right now this is me starting I lowered the deck halfway and uh, I went back over it and I wasn't going to go any lower than that simply because I felt that the grass would have just been scorched with the weather how it is and the unexpected rain sometimes here and there I didn't even want to deal with it so I, I just I went half deck height and then went around it again and what i did on this one is i believe i just went the same path down and back and then that was pretty much it And if you notice the the difference of height from that single line that I just did compared to the other line that was previously there. And also if you notice that there's that line a clump of grass, that little lighter white line or lighter green 
um, from the previous paths. So as I'm going over, and this is exactly why I went over it again, simply because I didn't want those lines of grass there. I wanted it to mulch it even a little bit more. And maybe having the mulch kit installed would have allowed it to cut it better the initial time. But again, I didn't have that. But that's okay because you don't always need that mulching kit. You could just go over it again. Yes, that creates a little bit more work. But if you're a commercial business, you should be proud of your work that you do. And you want people to see how well you do it. So um, you want to make sure that you're doing a good job. Because your work uh, is being seen by everybody that passes it. And if you have... um, really bad horrible work then no one's going to want to hire you and that's that's just the way it is um so i go over this back and forth again and then uh after this is pretty much done then i showcase what it looked like prior and what it looked like afterwards um but overgrown properties uh are, are becoming the next biggest trend right now on youtube um which is very interesting but in my opinion, would I ever mow overgrown properties again? Absolutely not. I don't think I would ever do it unless that individual is going to be one of my consistent customers. And I say that because there's such a big, strong liability by doing these types of properties that I would never do it. I mean, you could damage equipment. You could injure yourself. You could break something on, on the homeowner's property. It's just not even worth it. Um, It's a lot of money, yes, but over time, uh, it's not worth it. And if you're a reputable business, if you take pride in the work that you do, um, you're not just going to go out there and just mow any overgrown property because you're going to be so uh, filled with work um, with good, consistent clients that you're not going to have the time to go out and mow a single property. Now, there are individuals on YouTube and that go out there and mow properties like this, which is absolutely fine. but I think I personally think this is my personal opinion that they're spreading the wrong message to viewers. Um, yes, they're going out there and they're doing items or they're doing jobs for free, um, which is good for the community. But they're not going into the background story of, hey, this is a liability or maybe they're not asking permission. I think we've seen that in some uh, YouTubers uh, channels that say, hey, I just went and mowed a property. Okay, I'm going to pause on that story. I'm going to talk about what just happened right now. So it died, and this was the second battery. It died, and I'm a little upset right now just because I'm tired. It's hot, humid, which is fine. So I get the next battery. It's fully fully charged at this point. I'm like, sweet. Um, put it back in, and I don't even – I just put the other battery back in, hold both of them, and then continue on. So from that amount of time when I first died to when I recharged it, it was good to go. And I was able to continue my job and mow with that. And it was it was pretty cool. I was quite amazed by how much it charged and how little of time it was. All right, so back to my opinion on overgrown properties. Um, the biggest concern that I have with individuals that are uploading overgrown property videos is that they're not going into detail and the backstory of how they got there. So when you see individuals that are going on public property or going on private property and just mowing and just thinking that they're doing a good job, well, that's not always the case because you see how big of a liability. And there's so much out there right now with cancel culture and lawsuits and everything else that you do not, as an individual, you do not want to put yourself in that in that situation, even with a, in a, with a business. I just I wouldn't do it nowadays. People right now are extremely ungrateful for the littlest things. And I think there's so much uh, legality right now with everything else. I just, I wouldn't even, I wouldn't even risk it. I wouldn't even risk it for thousands of dollars and thousands of views on YouTube. It's just not worth it. And, and myself, the way I've seen it and the way I've been, you know, I haven't even been on YouTube that long, but from what I've seen and, and experienced, it's just, I want to stick to my my business, make sure that I'm experienced enough, that we have enough work and that we're doing, and I say we, but it's mostly just me, um, that everything's taken care of and I do a good job and I focus and focus all my attention to my customers and make sure they're happy and that's it. Um, so I don't think I would ever any longer 
record myself mowing a customer's property unless I had written agreements uh, stating that they they have I have their permission to be on their property and record. And I would obviously show that in a video like, hey, this is I have permission because so many people can go out there and report you. And I've seen that not in just lawn care videos, but other videos where people were doing things and they got reported for doing that by their viewers. So it, it just becomes very, uh, I guess, just a, a, a situation that I don't want to be a part of. So if you see somebody out there that's mowing over on property and say, we're doing it for free, blah, 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 blah. Um, cool. Good for them. But be aware that that's not something you should probably always do. And I don't know their backstory and what they're doing, but that's, you know, maybe it's not okay. Maybe they get, they're going to get in trouble. Um, but, uh, just stick to your own, mind your own business and do your thing. Uh, because that's, that's what I'm going to do from, from now on. But I mowed this property. I knew there was no trash back there. There was no metal objects that were going to damage equipment. I purposefully overgrew my property for three months and as an experiment, as an experiment for utilizing this battery powered equipment. So I'm pretty much done. Uh, the dog scares me right here because he barks at me and then I'm like, okay, whatever. I'm done, blow everything off, and then I'll put up some pictures of uh, what uh, this looks like uh, before and what it looks like after. So here's what it looks like before, and then here are some shots of what it looks like after. I'm watering the grass because I need to make it a little bit more green. All right, guys, so that's pretty much the end of the video. Uh, feel free to subscribe, uh, like the video, and then uh, I'll try to put more up for every viewer. All right.